Welcome back to Sedlak Off-Road School. Today with the ultimate trail bike battle, we're riding Kawasaki's KLX 230RS against Honda's CRF 250F and let you know which one's the better bike out here on the trails. So if you're looking for a trail riding alternative to some of the bigger bikes, you really have three options, right? There's Yamaha's TTR range, there's Honda's CRF range, and then there's Kawasaki's KLX range. If you followed us for a while and you've been part of our training, you know that we have a little bit of everything. We have some Yamahas, we have some Hondas, and we have some Kawasaki's. Lately, we've been riding the CRF, especially the 250, and the KLX a lot more. So we thought it'd be a cool idea to put them together and really break down where the differences are, where one bike might have a little bit more of an advantage over the other, and then just kind of give you an idea of what might be your best option when you rock up at the showroom to buy your first bike. If you're wondering what bike you should choose and you're not sure, these trail bikes are a great entry point into the sport. They're really easy to ride. Their seat height is a little bit lower. Their suspension is set up a little bit softer. So the bike overall is more forgiving. So if you're just trying to learn and build your technique, build some confidence, uh, figure out what you really want to do with your riding and where you want to go, trail bikes are a great option. One other really great thing about these trail bikes is the price point, right? Either one of these you can get for around $5,000, which is a lot cheaper than your uh, Enduro dual sport bikes, right? That can easily cost nine, 10, 11,000 out there. So if you're just trying to get into the sport, looking at performance, looking at price, this is the ideal starting point. Okay guys, real quick, before we keep talking about the Honda and the Kawasaki, check the description below for a discount code on new sets of FXR gear, the factory premium goggles. If you're in the market for some good looking gear, get yourself that discount, save yourself some money. The Honda comes with a 250cc air-cooled engine, equipped with electric start, so it's really easy to just hop on, get the bike started. There's not a big learning curve there. Full-size set of wheels, 21 inch in the front, 18 inch in the rear, so very capable when riding more technical terrain. The Kawasaki, a 233cc engine, so a little bit less cc's compared to the Honda, also equipped with electric start, and then our model here, the RS, so a little bit lower in the seat height. They compress the forks a little bit, so this one comes in at 35.4 inches, an inch lower than the R, so if you get the bigger bike, you have a little bit more suspension travel. Also full-size set of wheels, 18 in the rear, 21 inch in the front, so there, as far as the stats go, very identical bikes. One thing that you will notice about these trail bikes is that they're actually pretty heavy. You would think because they're lower, because they're a little bit smaller of a bike, they would be lighter. The Honda coming in at 265 pounds, uh, the Kawasaki, the S model, uh, three pounds lighter at 262. So both are definitely heavier bikes. Luckily, once you're riding them, once that weight is in motion, the weight is very evenly distributed. So when you're riding, they're not as heavy, or at least they don't feel as heavy as they look on paper. All right, so let's look at some of the positives, some of the negatives, and the main differences between the two bikes. Starting with the Kawasaki, today we're riding the 230RS, so the shorter model. Um, if you look at the forks, you see they're compressed a little bit. That's how Kawasaki gets that seat height. Um, so obviously you're giving up a little bit of suspension travel. When you ride this bike, especially if you're a taller rider, it feels low in the front. Obviously that's where the, uh, where the height got dropped. It's not noticeable if you're not an experienced rider. For someone that's a little bit more experienced or that has a riding background, you will notice that the bike just feels like it's riding on the front end a lot more. On the plus side though, it makes the bike much easier to turn. So if you're new to riding and you're just, you know, not comfortable yet, especially on tighter trails, having the fork dropped a little bit makes the bike a lot more, um, you know, handle a lot easier, handle a lot better. At the same time, you're able to get both feet on the ground and support yourself. So if you're new to riding, there's definitely a plus point in having the forks a little bit lower. So looking at the Honda, as we've mentioned earlier, the weight is a little bit higher, right? Like three pounds heavier than the KLX, but 
the overall design is a little bit slimmer. So if you're riding standing up, the bike actually feels quite nimble and is really easy to handle. When you're riding sandier sections, overall the, the wheelbase is a little bit longer and the bike just feels a little bit more stable. So if you're riding terrain that's very loose, um, if you're riding faster sections, overall the Honda is just a little bit more of a stable bike. So that's it as far as the chassis goes. When it comes to power, the bikes actually feel very identical, very smooth, um, you know, very easy power delivery. So it makes the bikes very easy to ride when you make a mistake. The bike doesn't really get away from you. These bikes are very short first gear. So right away, if you start uh, going, you want to click to second, you want to click to third. Um, those are the gears where in tighter terrain, the bike really works well. Once it opens up a little bit, fourth and fifth really come into range. So if you ride longer dirt roads, you want to be at least in fourth gear, probably higher. The Kawasaki, the KLX even comes with a six gear uh, compared to the five gear transmission on the Honda. So if you're just riding wide open terrain, make sure you get up there in the gears. That's where these bikes perform the best. They are not doing really well when they're just revved out in low gears. Use the torque of the engine across both bikes it will be a big benefit. All right, so full day riding both bikes. Which one do we think is actually better? And it's a really tight race. And as always, it depends a little bit on rider preference and what you're looking for. If you're a shorter rider, if you're a female rider, if you have very little experience riding off-road, the 230 RS, the shorter seat height version, is definitely a really good choice. The bike's just really easy to ride. It's really easy to support yourself with both feet on the ground. Um, in slower sections, it handles extremely well and um, just overall a nice and easy bike to ride. The Honda, if you have a little bit more experience, if you rode some smaller bikes before, if you ride more desert, more wide open, faster terrain, uh, the stability of the bike at higher speeds will definitely be a plus for you. So based on these facts, now you can make your decision. Which bike do you want to ride? Which one are you going to have the, more, uh, the most fun on? And as I've mentioned, the difference is not massive, right? There's a couple little things that swing one way or the other. So at the end, it really comes down to, um, you know, what you can get a deal on, what's accessible to you, where you can get some dealer support. If you're interested in the Kawasaki KLX 140, check out this video here. In general, if you like this type of content, Please like and subscribe every week. We drop new videos, writing tips, bike reviews, and some fun events that we get up to here at Setlag Off-Road School.